Welcome to the getting started video for the DigiRule 2. The DigiRule 2 is essentially a kind of old school binary computer built into a 20 centimeter ruler. It features eight input data buttons for you to code your programs. Uh, it allows you to navigate around the different memory addresses using the next and previous buttons and also the go to button, which we'll have a look at. You can save the entered data using the save button. You can run your programs or stop them using the run stop button. And then you've got permanent um, eight permanent memory locations where you can save your programs or load them again. On the back we find it's got the instruction set summary which tells you the different instructions and what um, machine code or binary, um, eight binary digits that you would need to use for them. It's open source hardware um, so you can go to my website which I'll show you in a moment and you can make your own or um, get the source code whatever you want to do with it. And it also gives you a little bit of help here in terms of what the address LEDs are, the data LEDs, the buttons and so forth. Okay, so something that's quite important is when you go to put the CR2032 battery in, don't put it in like this. So don't put it under the plastic tabs and then push down because if you do that, you will probably, or most certainly, um, break this metal tab here, which, is, which, is, um, which forms part of the electrical circuit for this battery. What you need to do is put it under the metal tab first, then push down and you won't break this off, which is good news. All right, once that's in, you can turn it on. Funny enough, using the off on switch, it runs through its little startup sequence. At the moment, this LED is on, which is the stop LED. If this LED was on, it would be running. So your program would actually be running. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, with the data buttons here, you can press any of these to put in whatever data that you want. So any combination of eight bits. And we can navigate through the addresses by using the next and previous buttons. So at the moment, I'm on all zeros. There we go, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I can go backwards using the previous button. And I can even loop all the way around by pressing previous uh, when I'm on all zeros, and now I'm on all ones, and I can keep going back. Now I can jump to any memory location um, straight away just by putting in the memory address that I want. So I might want to go to this particular address, just put it in, and then press the go to button. And now on my address bus, or the address LEDs is showing me the location that I'm at. Um, I've got all zeros here at the moment, so if I press go to, it'll go to all zeros. So if I wanted to write a bit of a program, um, so I might go this, I press the save button, it will save that data in that memory location and automatically advance to the next memory location. And I might do that, save, and then I might have something else in there, save, save, and so forth. And if I keep going previous, I can see that all my data is now saved in each one of those memory locations. Um, what we can also do is load one of the pre-installed programs. So if I press and hold the load button, it's now cycling through these eight. So I can press any one of these to load one of my eight uh, programs, um, which have 256 bytes each um, for memory. So I'm going to load the very first one. So I'm going to press D0 button. The LED flashes while it's loading. And once it's finished, um, it stops flashing. And then it shows us the data that's now in the first memory location and the second, and the third, fourth, fifth. So this program has all of these bytes of data in all these different memory locations. To run it, I'm gonna go back to the first memory location and then press run. So this particular program is Kill the Bit, which is a really cool game that was made famous, I think, by the Altair 8800. It may have been around before that, I'm not sure exactly. You can see my address LEDs are flickering quite rapidly. That's because it's constantly cycling through a loop and in that loop, it's constantly telling the, um, the data within the, these LEDs to shift left. And then it's checking the status of the buttons to see if I've pressed a button and at what location I've pressed a button. If, I, if we want to get rid of the address LEDs, if they're getting annoying, just press the go to button while the program's running. If you want to bring it back, just press the go to button again. Okay, so the idea of this game is to press any one of these buttons when the corresponding LED lights up. If you do it at the right time, you'll turn the LED off or you will kill the bit. So if I do it here, so I successfully got it and it turned off. If I press any one of these buttons and the LED is off, it turns that LED on. So you can see, if I keep missing it, I just keep getting more and more bits. So the idea would be to try and turn off these bits. See if I can do this. 
more. There we go. And does that. If you push and hold, kind of looks a little bit cool. It just keeps turning them on and then turning them off as they cycle around. All right, so that's that. I could make this a bit faster if I wanted to. So go to the first address. This here is speed. If you have a look, speed is that first instruction. If I go to the next memory location, what's the speed? Oh, well, I've got it set it to this. So if I decrease that number, it will increase the speed because the, the higher the number, the, the higher the delay or the, the longer the delay. So I'm going to decrease this number just by one. I'm going to save that now. And you can see it's saved in there. Go to the first memory address, press run, and you can see now it's quite a bit faster. So I could speed it up even more, slow it down, or what have you. Okay, um, now if I wanted to, so I'll just stop that for the moment. If I wanted to, I could save this new program by pressing the save button, and I could put it back in that memory slot if I want. And then even if the battery is removed, that program will now be stored in there. All right, so that's that's enough for the moment for the DigiRule. Let's have a bit of a look at the software and the downloads and so forth. So looking over here, we've got the Brad's Projects website, bradsprojects.com. If you click on the DigiRule 2 link, um, it'll bring up the DigiRule 2 page. So on this page, you'd want to um, scroll all the way through. Like it just gives you information that you most probably would have read before. A video there shows you the front, shows you the back. And then we get to the download section. So in the download section, you've got one particular download which contains all of the files. So if you click that, it'll download it. And I've already downloaded this one. And in there is a zip file. So DigiRule 2 files, 30th September 2018. That's the current version. Um, if there are any updates, then that'll change to a new date, but it'll still have the same download link. Within that, we've got the code maker, which contains um, the template for the code maker, which is this one. And it also contains the, the program listings for the eight built-in programs that I've made. So I'll have a look at that in a second. Um, it's got DigiRule Notes Assembler, which, um, so you can use this. It just has listings for the same eight built-in programs that can be used on Luke Drum's website, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, it's got the PCB Gerber, if you want to make your own boards. It's got the layout, if you wanted to change the design of the board using dip trace. It's got the schematic diagram. It's got the source code, which is um, Swordfish Basic source code, um, source code. And it's also got the user manual in there as well. So the user manual I have completed now. So it gives you an overview, shows you what it looks like on the front and on the back. Gives you the operation, run stop modes, uh, program the digital two, storing a program, loading a program, running a program, stopping um, pre-configured registers, inserting the battery. So it's all in there. Um, so hopefully you'll find that very handy. And when you get to the actual um, instructions themselves, it gives you the examples of how those instructions would actually get used. All right, so let's have a bit of a look at the code maker. So I've got one open up here already, which is kill the bit. So here's the program listing for kill the bit. So it uses, what's that, um, 0 to 14. So it uses 15 instructions um, for this particular program. So the first thing it does is it sets the speed to 130. And as you saw when I was using the DigiRule just before, I changed that to 129, and it actually sped up just by, um, well, a little bit. Um, so once it sets the speed, it then copies the literal value to a register. The literal value it copies is the number one, and the register it copies it to is the data LED register. So that ensures that the rightmost LED um, is turned on. So this is essentially our setup code. Once we've done that, it's going to get into a constant loop here. The start of the loop is it shifts register left. The register it's going to shift left is the data LED register. So it moves that LED across one space to the left. We then copy a register to the accumulator. The register we're going to copy is the button register. So essentially, we're going to get the status of the eight buttons, put it into the accumulator, and then we're going to compare that with the data LED register to see um, if we've pressed a button when an LED is on or off or what have you. So by exclusive ORing the data LED register with the accumulator, um, it will toggle LEDs on or off um, if we've pressed a button. <clears throat> um, so the answer for that will be in the accumulator. So then we need to get it out of the accumulator, put it in the data LED register. So we copy from the accumulator to a register. 
the register we copy it to is the data LED register. And now that we've finished, we're going to jump back to the start, which is jump five, which is here. So we constantly just go in this loop here. So we shift, we copy buttons to the accumulator, we exclusive all those with the data LED, re LED register. We copy it back to the data LED register and keep going around. So that is our program. Now, if you wanted to make your own program, then um, so you could delete all this if you want, change the name to whatever it's going to be. And we could start to write in there something like, um, so if we pretend this is a new program, I could start to write speed. And it recognizes that speed is that particular machine code. And then I might write in here speed 101, for example. And then it converts that into binary. Or you could select from the drop down menu here. So I could get speed, for example, like that. Or I could get any of the other instructions. Or I could get, um, I'll do this one so you can see it. Or we could get any of the variables like the status register, button register, and so forth, which you can find here. Now we've also got these variables, which you can just make whatever you want. So I've got here my first number. I could call this, uh, this is my number, whatever you want to call it. And now when we refer to it in the code, there it is, this is my number. So it knows that that is 240 or 11110000. And we can use that in our code. All right, so that's the Excel spreadsheet. And these are all the machine code bits that you would actually type into the ruler. So let's get rid of that. So you'd find on the ruler that that's what's in each memory location, all the way up to uh, number 14. And then when we once we've loaded that in, we then go all the way back to zero on the digi rule. Press the run stop button and it would run through that code as we just saw. Now something that I'm um, really quite excited about is what uh, Luke Drum has come up with. So if we go to his assembler, which can be found at this link, I've got it opened up here. So he's got this, um, this text editor where you can actually type up your assembly um, code in there. And once you've done that, it will spit out the machine code. So this is what you would put on your, um, what you would program into the digital to itself. It also gives you the, the value in decimal, it gives you the meaning of what it actually is, and also the, um, the address. Um, it's also got this walkthrough option, which um, I'll show you. But um, as just from conversation with Luke, a couple of things aren't quite working there, but it's, you know, it's still really cool, so we'll have a look. Now, just like with, with any other real um, assembler or IDE, you're allowed to put in comments there. So if you put a double slash followed by whatever text you want, the assembler will actually just completely disregard that. Um, so you're allowed to put comments in your code. If you don't put those double slashes in there and you try and put comments, um, it's not gonna like that. It's going, sorry, I don't know what that is. So it's, um, it's very good at picking up those errors. Um, so we can have a look here. You can uh, actually, no, I'll go to these defines. You can also define your own variables. So if we go define my number here, and I'm gonna make it 240, Anytime I refer to my number in my code, it actually knows ah, you're talking about 240. Um, so you can go 240 all the way up to 251 for your, um, for your own variables. Okay, so that's that one. Um, this is really cool as well. It also gives you some nicknames for um, when you wanna create loops, if you wanna to jump to a particular location. So you can see in the code here, we've got jump loop so instead of going okay i want to jump to memory location three we can put in jump loop there and as long as we've got that name there with the the colon there at the front uh, the side of it um, it will automatically know what memory location that is and it auto updates so for example we can see here that the first instruction is copy literal value to register um, so copy a literal value to a register so copy the literal value 145 to the data LED register. And we can see it's here. Copy literal value 145 to the data LED register. If I got rid of that, actually no, not yet. Then we jump to loop. So if we go jump loop, we can see that loop is actually given the, so uh, it's given the value three. So therefore that nickname right there, or that heading, is at memory location three. But if I get rid of the code before it, we can now see that loop 
is the first thing. So if we jump to loop, it's going to jump to zero. Or if I put more code before it, so for example, I might set the speed to 130, with that extra code before it, loop is now five. So that's very, very, very handy to have that. Um, now, when you write your code, so as you can see here, you just write, you write it all the way across um, using up as many bytes as needed for that particular um, instruction. So copy LR is expecting a literal value and it's, it's also expecting the register you want to copy it to. If we had something else like speed, it's only expecting the number that you want for that speed. Uh, we could do other things like copy um, AR, so that's copying the accumulator to a register. All it's expecting is a register. So I might put in there the data LED register, and that's my register that it will copy to. And it recognizes that because there's a define up here for the data LED register. All right, very cool. Now let's, let's kind of wrap this up a little bit. So Luke Drum has written this tennis game, which is where the ball goes back and forth and, and the play, there's a two player game. You've got to press the button um, all the way to the very right or all the way to the very left when the corresponding LED lights up. So what we need to do is once we've loaded it, we grab all of this and then we chuck it in our assembler window. There we go. Paste it in and there it is. So it spits it out, all the code for this particular game. And then when we look at the walkthrough, you can see that it's it's actually following the code through and this ball shifts across on the data LEDs until we get to here. And now it even allows you to have some input. So when it gets to there, what we need to do is press the leftmost button to hit it back the other way. And now you can see it comes back the other way. And when it gets to there, we should be pressing this button so that it gets hit back the other way. So it kind of follows through. It's, it's a walkthrough. Very handy indeed. All right, so I think we've pretty much covered everything there. We've had a look at the DigiRule 2 itself. We've had a look at the website, the downloads. We've had a look at um, the user manual, um, the Excel spreadsheet, and also Luke Drum's uh, DigiRuleNotes.com. So hopefully all of this here put together will you know, really get you, um, get you started, and I hope you have a lot of fun with the DigiRule 2. Actually, one last thing is if we look on the Brad's Projects website again, there's a place where you can upload your own files. So if you've come up with a really cool program that you think that other people might want to have a look at, you can upload it here. So all you need to do is select your file, whatever it's going to be. I'll just do the user manual here. And it will automatically upload that um, to, my, to a certain location on my server. And once that's finished, so we can click here to have a look at that directory listing. So the only thing in there at the moment is what I just uploaded then. But hopefully people will upload some stuff and we'll get some cool things in there. All right, so that is the uh, getting started video for the DigiRule 2.